Well, creatively, we've come up with what we like here. We've changed this file by taking out some of the chimes and rearranging the fade here so that it ends at the right place. But let's say we don't like the volume changes that are internal to the project. So what can we do about that? Well, because we have clip gain now, we could reset the clip gain for each one of these pieces. That's one option. Another option, because tracks are very cheap in Pro Tools, they're free, in fact, let's push and make this guy smaller and create a new track. We haven't done this yet, so it's in the Track menu, New, Shift-Command-N, Shift-Control-N on a PC, and we have some options for creating our new track. So we're going to create one new track. Now, do we want mono or stereo audio track? Well, we want stereo because all of our files are in stereo. How do we know? Well, it was a stereo file when we brought it in. The word stereo is attached to every one of our clips over here, so we know it's a stereo file. So we want a stereo track. Now there is a keystroke that's kind of handy here. If you hold down your command key or control key on a PC, you can use your left and right arrows to switch between mono and stereo. And that's kind of a handy one. The up and down arrows switch you through the types of tracks that are available. So however you want to do it with keystrokes or by choosing, we'll create one new stereo audio track in samples. And we'll create it. And let's make him just be a little bit bigger too. Maybe like, yeah, that's good. So for volume changes that happen internally in a piece, whether it's a vocal or a chime or a guitar part or whatever. There are lots of ways to do this. You can write automation that changes the volume over time inside of a track, or you can just put new information on new tracks. So let's say that we felt that the little chain sound and the carillon needed to be a little bit louder relative to the chimes and the other chime. So does that mean that the chimes need to get softer? or the carillon needs to get louder. Well, to determine that, we might need to make a master fader. So let's do that Shift-Command-N and make a new track again, and make a stereo master fader right there in the middle in samples. And the master fader is the sum of all the tracks in your session, with the exception that anything that's muted is not going to go into the master fader. So. It gets a kind of a different look. In fact, let's use a keystroke that we learned earlier, our command equals, to pop over to the mix window. And let's take a look at all the guys that are in the mix window. And the master fader has a different type of icon. Where the audio tracks have waveform icons, the master fader has this sigma, this sum. So it's summing up all the tracks that have come before. I usually put my master fader on the right because it's sort of like everything's going that way before it comes out of Pro Tools. I don't know. It's a, sort of a convention, I guess. There's no law about it. You can put it on the left or in the middle, but it seems to make sense on the right. And there's no input, really, because its input is all the stuff in your session. So the concept here is that every track by itself could be okay in terms of its volume, but by adding them together, this one and this one and this one and lots of other tracks that you have, you could blow out your mix. So the master is adding up everything that it's hearing and seeing if you're still okay. So that's why you use a master. And you also use a master to see if you're putting out a decent volume. And by that I mean, let's see, let's resize this window so that we can see our waveforms and our master fader at the same time, sort of like that. So back here, so we know that the playback might be a little loud, but that's sort of irrelevant, right? That's just a headphone volume or a monitor volume. What's really important in making the audio file is, is this the right volume? 
And so it could actually come up just a little bit. And so we could raise its volume here. So raising the volume on the clock edit track will raise the volume of every clip that's on the clock edit track. As we said earlier, you can adjust the individual clip gain on any individual clip, but this will raise the volume of everything on that track. So knowing that, and knowing that we want to make these two guys a little louder, what if we took the chimes and moved them down onto this other track that would be slightly less volume than the first track? Well, we can do that and watch me do this the wrong way. So I'm in shuffle mode, right? And so I'm going to pick this guy up and drag him down here. Well, he won't go. He won't go because he's in shuffle mode, and I want to drag him in slip mode. Now, you don't want to wiggle him one way or the other here. So let me undo that and bring him straight down, because I don't want to rearrange him in time. I just want to rearrange his volume. And I'll bring down the other guy right behind him. And so now I have a slight volume discrepancy between the first track and the second track, but I think that's good, right? And now the volume is a little bit more compatible. In fact, this guy might be just a smidgen too loud. So I'm looking at this number down here to make this change. A 6 dB volume change is quite a bit, even though it's not real far on the fader. But about three, three and a half maybe is about what I want. So a little tough on the trackpad to get right in that neighborhood. Let me do this. And by the way, one handy thing is when you've reset this guy all over the place and you just want him to go back to zero, hold down the option key and click and he snaps back to zero. So once again, anywhere you are, option, click, sets him back to zero. So let me move him up just a little bit like that. And now I've got to make sure that if I have the same information coming out of two different tracks here, there's no way my master can be blown. What's going to blow it is, let me just do this. I'll move this guy over here and add these two together, right? Now I'm going to hear this and this together. Okay, too many bells. But you can get the idea that by adding this one and this one together, I have a louder overall volume here. And that's why you want a master fader. You want to be sure that you're not creating a situation by having tracks that by themselves are just fine, but when added together, causing you a problem. So now I think if I use shuffle mode, I can slide this guy back over to where he belongs. He's not going to cooperate, is he? Well, I could delete this. If I delete it in shuffle mode, though, it snaps this guy over. So if I delete him in slip mode and leave this guy where he's supposed to be, and then go to shuffle mode. I still think it's going to do this. It's going to bring it over to there, right? And then I can use slip mode to slide him back down to here. Okay, now I'm sort of back where I wanted to be. So we'll call that clock edit, and we'll call this the chimes. And now I'm obeying my own rule about being informative on the track names. So that's a bit about why to use a master fader and how to accomplish this edit with multiple tracks. Now in the next movie, we'll explore how to consolidate and bounce and really export the various options for exporting this piece of audio that we've created and getting it to our client.